Hello, this is another Kotlin episode. Um, we will start off with the uh, revision of what we have done so far and then uh, we'll take off. We're sorry for the um, delay. Um, I got involved into some other things. Uh, let's go to mail.google.com, 30 days of Kotlin and let's start the rest. Okay, that's Kotlin and moving uh, at it is there. Maximize it. We have uh, uh, we should just bookmark this. Okay, so we were getting <clears throat> on the beginner thing. So there's the list of code labs to follow. And then Kotlin style guide at Kotlin tuning system. There are articles, there are vocabulary, and the resource is growing definitely because guides were not as uh, some guides, okay. style guide, um, okay, this is just like the dark language overview of sorts. Android edition Kotlin resources are on Kotlin Lang dot org, Kotlin on Android Fab, Kotlin to an existing app, common Kotlin patterns with Android and stuff, Kotlin bootcamp for programmers. We did the getting started where we do, did the Kotlin REPL, then we did some Kotlin basics, we start listening to, then we did some Kotlin functions. Today would be for classes and objects and we will do that and let's see if we can get to extensions uh, I'll just add this to the bookmarks bar <coughs> it added yeah and uh, that's one thing then that's Android basics in Kotlin Android Kotlin fundamentals now this is confusing. Uh, repository connecting to the internet. Android Kotlin fundamentals versus basics in Kotlin. Okay, so I guess this is uh, Post content <coughs> pathway one, pathway two. Uh, pathway four pathways such uh, confused now because the amount of content over here has changed. So uh, use common Kotlin patterns with Android, work with fragments, ham conversion, what is ham conversion? In the last stack method, conversion. Implementation can be represented using an anonymous function in Kotlin. The process is known as SAM conversion. SAM conversion can make your code considerably cleaner. It's like Java 8 Kotlin supports SAM conversions. This means that Kotlin function literals can be automatically converted into implementations of Java interfaces. The single non default method, as long as the Parameter types you can use this for creating instances of the SAM interfaces. 
<coughs> we get into that um scotland style ride okay so what is acceptable what is not acceptable for like the idiomatic scotland stuff uh code labs is code labs at google.com so we're supposed to be doing this code lab followed by uh android with kotlin so that would be android kotlin fundamentals and uh, i guess advanced android with kotlin so i'll just bookmark uh, these three Advanced Android in Kotlin, uh, yes. and I'll also uh, let's just do this because this Android Basics in Kotlin is something that's relatively new, and most of it's still under uh, development. So we could uh, we could uh, really do that. Uh, see what is available and not. So. Now uh, we don't need to come back. Like, we do need to come back to this as well. So uh, we'll just put it on the bookmark toolbar as well. So this is the 30 days of Kotlin. Um, Kotlin Bootcamp, then we go to Kotlin Android Fundamentals, uh, Android Basics, and then we switch to Advanced Android in Kotlin. And I think 30 days of Kotlin is where we could uh, get access to all of these resources. Okay. So, adopting Kotlin collections, view details, default articles. <coughs> Uh, the DCF article would be that Florida Montanus Cuban, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Two, three, three, four. Elvis, string templates, run expressions, properties. Cool. I uh, think I need this article right now. Mm. Collections and sequences. Oh, these are just, you know, some medium posts. And um, these are some, uh, you know, vocabulary, Kotlin specific vocabulary. Uh, let's get started on what we are doing today. Uh, we are doing object oriented programming because we've already done the Kotlin basics thing when we learned about uh, types and operators and how they work. We learned about uh, compare conditions and booleans. Then we learned about nullability and uh, there's something interesting. Yeah, so this um, double bang operator or bang bang operator is something we should not use because that's why they put it over here as double bang. <coughs> We need to do something about the website. It just refuses to scroll at times. I don't know uh, what is being used under the web. I think it's actually at that. No one. Hmm. Try out some dupes. So we did that while, do while, we did for, we did, did all these dupes. Then we did the summary and we did the homework and then we did the next school lab which is this one and welcome explore the main function. We first started writing 
Things and files, almost everything has a value in Kotlin, which includes all of this if and you know while and uh, open expressions. So you could simply pass a when somewhere, something or more. Good lab. This is what we are getting started with today, and let's get introduced. Um, we're going to learn is how to create classes and access properties in Kotlin. <coughs> How to create new class constructors, how to create a subclass, how inheritance works, website classes, interfaces, and interface delegation, how to create and use data classes, how to use singletons, enums, and sealed classes. Um, we'll create a class with properties, constructors. Okay. Let's do some terminology. Classes are blueprints for objects. For example, an aquarium class, looking for making an, an aquarium object. Objects are instances of classes. So properties are characteristics of classes, such as length, width, height, and aquarium methods, also called member functions, or functionality of the class. Methods are what you do with the object. Interface is a specification that a class can implement. For example, meaning is common to objects rather than aquariums. <laughs> and cleaning generally happens in similar ways for different objects. They could have an interface for clean that defines a clean method, and the aquarium class could uh, implement the clean interface to the clean aquarium to clean aquarium with a soft sponge or something. Packages are a way to group related code to keep it organized or to make a library of code. Once the package is created, you can import the package's contents into another file and reuse the code in classes in it. So when we have those uh, terminology out of the way, we can do our first class. Okay. This starts we create a new package and a class with some properties and a method. Uh, we'll just do it side by side and switch the Team to IntelliJ Light or something. Appearance and behavior. Oh, we can just switch it to IntelliJ Light and it will be fine. Maybe. And we'll keep the have a coffee thing going on. Now uh, we are doing stuff. Let's check it out. This is our source directory. So first we create a package in a project pane. Uh, we under the Hello Kotlin project. Right click on the source folder and uh, to a new package and call it example dot myf example dot myf and uh, create a class with properties. Classes are defined with the keyword class. Class names by convention start with a capital letter. So we are going to create this class with these properties. Right click the example.myf package and do a new class. Kotlin file slash class. And then kind select class and name the class at the end. And uh, I have an experience class. It just includes the package name over here. Inside the aquarium class, define and initialize bar properties for the width, length, and height. So, bar width, length, and okay. So we are. I suppose we can't uh, 
property getter or setter expected. And I know that I end then I uh, forty hundred forty hundred and uh, under the hood Kotlin automatically creates getters and setters for the properties you define in the aquarium class so you can access the properties directory for example my aquarium dot length if you decide if you declare these properties with val instead of val, the properties would be immutable. You could only set them once, and all the instances of Aquarium would have same dimensions. So, cool. So, create a main function just to test things out. And uh, okay, so this is a function called build Aquarium. And uh, okay, we have to also mention the fun keyword and well, my aquarium for sure. Aquarium, fine, and doing build aquarium inside the main function. Although main function should also be declared, I'm doing this. Ah, it's fine. Now we are with Ado method. So if we on inside the aquarium class. Fun paint size is to a print in and print I Yes, that is fine. Do, do we get an automatically code for matter in Kotlin? Is it in refactor or something? Wow. Auto format code in Kotlin. Um, control shift. Um, so all shift L reformatted the code, but it didn't fix these. Uh, think that IntelliJ idea just crashed on me. Was it due to OBS? No, I'm still recording OBS, so that should be fine. <coughs> uh, hmm. 
hopeful uh, i really hope that it uh, you know that this uh, this would have been a more sensible way of doing things. Whatever Kotlin wants from us. Never mind. Okay. So, right now, um, we're at four ship and right side ship. Um, in the aquarium class, add a method to the print aquariums. In main.kt and build aquarium, call print size. Uh, okay. My aquarium. Uh, Print size. Uh, is this supposed to be inside main not kitty? Oh. Then we're just supposed to run this. and wait for the run okay okay so there was a space on here mm, in the build aquarium add code to set height to 60 and print the change dimension properties so um my aquarium dot height is sixty my aquarium dot in size play and this will happen now with <coughs> Uh, moving fast forward, so we need to add class constructors. Create a constructor, you add a constructor to the aquarium class, and uh, every example of aquarium is created with the same dimensions. You can change the dimensions when it is created by the by setting the properties. It will be simpler to create it with the correct size to begin with. In some programming languages, the constructor is defined by creating a method. Within the class, there are the same name as the class. In Kotlin, you define the constructor di directly in the class declaration itself, specifying the parameters inside parentheses as if the class was a method. As with functions in Kotlin, those parameters can include default values. Okay. So, let's do then. Sorry. Print comma this one and uh, okay. we can you know where then in right right in. And with right and I guess I have to declare it as where and then again where so it will make the property functions for uh, property declarations for me and uh, it will be build aquarium my aquarium with showing an error so. Length equal to uh, what was our length? 
hundred height equals twenty and width equals thirty-five. We can also I think uh, do it as twenty hundred forty five and uh, well just uh, can have default values for them so it's hundred um it's twenty and it's forty. And then do all shift L and we're to go. Run this and you'll see at forty five twenty hundred because it's the thing with uh test its length is twenty, height is hundred, width is forty five. Uh, there's more compact Kotlin way to define the property stately within the constructor using where or while is what we did when you create an aquarium object with that constructor you can specify no arguments and get the default values or specify just some of them or specify all of them and create a completely custom size aquarium in the build aquarium function try out different ways of creating aquarium or just uh, copy this and uh, paste it here. here. And we're good to go. So, run the program and observe the output. We get the same output as that and add any clocks. Example constructors above just declare properties and assign the value of expression to them. If a constructor needs more initialization code, it can be placed in one or more init blocks. In this step, we we'll add some init blocks to the aquarium class. In the aquarium class, add an init block to print that the object is initializing, and the second block to print volume in the first. Cool. And uh, um, now, at this point, I'm wondering whether we can. Uh, Like have a synchronous code within the init block. We'll come to that when we come to that. Init blocks are executed in order in which they appear in the class definition, and all of them are executed when the constructor is called. Parameters of the primary constructor can be used in the initializer blocks. Any property used in the initializer blocks must be cleared previously. Learn about secondary constructors. In this step, you learn about secondary constructors and add one of your class. In addition to a primary constructor, which can have one or more init blocks, a Kotlin class can also have one or more secondary constructors to allow constructor overloading. That is, constructors with different arguments. Kotlin coding style says that each, each class should have only one constructor using default values and name parameters. This is because using multiple constructors leads to more code paths and the likelihood that one or more paths will go untested. Before writing a secondary constructor, consider whether a factory function would work instead. Keep the class definition clean. Factory function. So, will you get into factory functions in this or not? Um, you declare factory function for a class avoiding giving the same name as the class itself prefer using a distinct name making it clear why the behavior of the factory function is special only if there is really no special semantics you can use the same name as um, point companion object 
unpolar okay, so this companion object could be one single thing stuff we'll get into factory once we get into factories. the aquarium class adds a secondary constructor that takes a number of fish as its argument using the constructor keyword get a valve tank property for the calculated volume of the aquarium Okay, constructor number of fish in it. So instead of giving it the same name, we have like a recording class and a secondary constructor that takes our number of fish as its argument using the constructor keyword. So we will find methods the same name as the class to get a constructor. But we use this constructor keyword. So within the aquarium class, we have a constructor keyword. It's almost a uh, feeling as if I have never used Spotlight before. Um, number of fish, and so the type in and should I just call this for some other constructor and then uh, we can have its own image stuff where tank calls to number of fish into 2000. And uh, inside the secondary constructor, keep the length and width, which was set in the primary constructor, the same. So, and calculate the height needed to make the tank the given one. So, height equal to length and width are the same as the uh, your since we call the primary constructors we have those default values right and we could also take some parameters over here past the constructor so that, that that is what helps us um inside the secondary constructor inside the build aquarium function add a call to create an aquarium using the secondary constructor so I would be um, mm, six. We put a number of fish that will automatically call the other constructor. see a lot of polymorphism going on uh, and partly glad that that dart as a language doesn't have this uh, in my opinion this makes managing nightmare Volume is being printed twice. One is for volume, and the other is for volume, oh, which is for aquarium six. So, volume 96 liter, and I'm initializing volume 96. We have this now, so that volume. 
um, and so we have to run it. So you see. Yeah, William six uh, number of fish equal to twenty nine. Um let's put this one up and um, okay, so volume is being printed twice after acquiring initializers. Uh one is eighty liter and is 60 liters. First volume is the uh, volume required by the fish, and then width was nine. Um, notice that the volume is printed twice. Could I have included the constructor keyword primary constructor? Like uh, when the aquarium was initializing, what I meant by that. This aquarium was initializing, so that was that. And the 80 liter volume was for the number of, uh, you know, for the default uh, volume. And then uh, we changed the width or height of the tank based on the number of fish. So this tank is one. Yeah, if we just want to get a uh, aquarium six dot ten. Let's suppose uh, we're not getting this uh, uh, tank. Uh, or this number of fish actually. And neither getting this time or this number of fish within the so we don't have getters to these. <coughs> Let's see if we can uh, have a new property getter. So In the uh, class, this is organized. This, this is very cool. And uh, size method add a volume. And that is it. Uh, limited. And now we are doing aquarium initializing now. Add a property setter. So in the aquarium class, change volume to aware so that it can be set more than once. Um, there is a volume. Add a setter for the volume property by adding a set method. So within this, uh, I can add a setter and uh, Well, needs to be well to be allowed a setter. 
okay and uh, whenever we set like we have volume equals to this or it's not the volume that changes but uh, the height that does um, build aquarium at the add code to set volume of the aquarium to 70 liters I print the new size so I'll just copy this and okay. I'll run this run your program again and observe the change height and volume Now we are talking about visibility modifiers. Um, there have been no visibility modifiers such as public or private in the code so far. That's because in Kotlin everything is public by default, which means everything can be accessed everywhere, including classes, methods, properties, and member variables. Classes, objects, interfaces, constructors, functions, properties, and resetters can have visibility modifiers. Public means visible outside the class. Um, internal means it will only be visible within that module. A module is a set of Kotlin files compiled together. For example, a library or, uh, or application. <coughs> Private means it is only visible within the class. And protected is the same as private, but will also be visible to any subclasses. So if I am uh, subclassing aquarium to a blue aquarium, the protected uh, values will be available to that as well. Um, let's just uh, refactor it. Now we switch to member variables properties within a class. Member variables are public by default. If you define them with where they are mutable that is readable and writable if you define them with val they read only after initialization if you want a property that your code can read or write but uh, outside code can only read you can leave the property and its getter as public and declare the setter as private as shown below so um, if i set this value as Private. I don't think I will be able to set this. Uh, this is giving an error because this setter is private. Uh, make set volume public. Make set volume internal. Properties within a class or member variables are public by default. Okay. Next. Learn about subclasses. I'll just make it internal. Learn about subclasses and inheriting. So we could do a singular over here. Let's see. Uh, abstract classes and interfaces. Interface delegation, data class, and more singletons in our interesting. Let's let's start the subclass module. So I am not uh, uh, doing any version content on this one. I think I need to take a shot. Um, in this step, you make the aquarium class open so that you can override the next step. Uh, make the aquarium class and all of its properties with open keyword. Um, in Kotlin, by default, classes cannot be subclass. Similarly, properties and member variables cannot be overridden by subclasses, so they can be accessed. You must mark the class is open to allow it to be subclass. Similarly, you must mark properties and member variables as open 
in order to override them in some classes. The open keyword is required to prevent accidentally leaking implementation details as part of the classes. Uh, prevent accidentally leaking implementation details as part of the classes interface. I know what that means. See, open and then come back to um big size maybe um okay so each variable is also needed to be marked off. Hmm. properties and member variables so I have to mark this as open and add an open shape property value triangle hmm. I'll have to mark a few right. Just open well shape angle or uh, type annotation is required. Now uh, add an open water property and with the getter that returns ninety percent of the value of the aquarium so um open where water should be of a type double equals to zero zero so the value of the water is zero but uh, if I uh, volume into zero dot nine. So we're doing an all shift L. <coughs> Good. Add code to print size method to print the shape and amount of water percentage of the volume. So print size prints the shape and uh, We're just changing this implementation in size as um, width, length, height, uh, volume is that, and water is water. And that's inside brackets. Uh, and that's water by water. So one hundred. So 
successful and then average. Um, build aquarium changes the code to create aquarium and still aquarium set for some unknown reason. Uh, aquarium theater set class. Now this is one called tower tank, which implements a rounded cylinder tank instead of a rectangular tank. You can add tower tank below aquarium because you can add another class in the same file as the aquarium class. So In tower tank override the height property, which is defined in the constructor to override the property, it's override keyboard in the set class. So the classes must declare the constructor parameters explicitly. Make the constructor for tower tank take a diameter, is a diameter for both length and width, I'm calling the constructor in the aquarium super class. So Create a class and class of the tower tank action and class. Now we do some forward right where. I think uh, when there is a class of a field called tower tank, which implements a rounded cylinder tank. In tower tank override the height property, which is defined in constructor to override the property, use override keyword. Okay, so doing this. Uh, this one and this one and okay so this is how it's happening <coughs> tower tank is of type aquarium is what i would call this like tower tank is a relationship with an aquarium and we're just overriding wire height wire diameter is giving them the new diameter and height and then should be also diameter because no uh, cylindrical tank and now override the volume property to calculate a cylinder so within the कल आपको एक ईमेल भेज देते हैं पापा जी हेलो कैसे हो जी भैया आए नहीं बारे की ये ना हाँ इंपोर्ट एक नया हम लोग चाहो land dot map dot um ah my start would be not getting any t t shaking in Kotlin or Java. So we will uh, be using a slash number of five to see how intelligence uh intelligent idea okay. does this. Uh so, so how 
Pain, Jawa, and Jawa. Jawa, 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 Jawa. Remember that the main report line is completely new right now. Even Java could be set to new. Is there been programming in that about a year or so? So we kind of forget that stuff. Okay, so we're back with the audio and uh, <coughs> start recording again. And just checking whether the audio is in the right levels or not. We are overriding volume property to calculate a cylinder. And that just happened because Now the tower tank override water property. Uh, now uh, override the shape to the cylinder and then you find the tower tank class should look something like the code. Yes. Yep. In build aquarium, create a tower tank with diameter of 25. Where is that to aquarium locating? Uh, we're supposed to be doing these things in the same file. Uh, let's do a main locating. I could have this. Okay, and uh, doing this, and then where is this? 
taking this uh, aquarium.ktk main thing hello and function run for us uh, and uh, uh, oh. now doing this thing and task web seconds this interface so sometimes we want to define common behavior or properties to be shared among some behavior classes. What can offer two ways to do that? Interfaces and abstract class. This asks you create an abstract class, Aquarium Fish, class for properties that are common to all fish. You create an interface called Fish Action to be defined behavior common to all fish. Neither an abstract class nor an interface can be instantiated on its own. It means you cannot create objects of the types directly. Abstract classes have constructors, interfaces can't have any constructor logic or store any state. Abstract classes are always open, you don't need to mark them with open properties and methods of an abstract class are non abstract. Unless you explicitly mark them with abstract keyword, that means subclasses can use them as given properties or methods are abstract the subclasses must implement so the point is we're creating an abstract class so fish aquarium dot kt create class fish okay i am creating a new quarter five class so, Class and its name is Aquarium Fish and then abstract class uh, abstract well color type string. Now, create two subclasses of Aquarium Fish Shark. Can we have multiple classes for five? I don't think Java used to allow that. Now, just want to have a look at this fish and just fit. Curious. Okay. I don't think that that color is gold. So I search for a golden leopard. The cosmos. Uh, okay. Now uh, something. <coughs> Hey, something is called record. <sighs> Time pass out of the way. We are in main.kt, create a make fish function to test your classes, instantiate a shark, and oh, it is main.kt.
was supposed to be main node kitty. Okay. Um, I'm doing a make fish, which is fun. And uh, <coughs> doing something like this. And uh, just deleting this one and calling my fish and the shark thingy, which is importing. Uh, and uh, uh, deleting aquarium and tower tank. Um, yeah. That's cool. And run are uh, the main thing. And the following diagram represents the shark class. The customer's class is a plus and offset class. One offset class, two subclasses, uh, inheritance, create an interface, uh, perception. William Fish. Uh, you have an interface. Interface. Uh, fish action. And um, uh, fun. I eat. I don't need to implement the function because obviously. And uh, now the fish should stay. And uh, I not know he was the company. Uh, make sure that's it. Containers, uh, fish, fish, and same. Fish action and then increment members. Uh, yeah, and print and then have a it L and uh, going to take this forward from here. Um, take fish function each fish you created at. Is something calling it. So chart before I was just going to main dot kt and make fish is going to be modified and main is going to be done. And back to interface delegation. Two classes, one interface. So class shark class black buttons both implement the single interface and the two implementations. Uh when to use abstract classes versus interfaces, the examples above are simple, but when you have a lot of interrelated classes, abstract classes and interfaces can help to keep your design cleaner, more organized, and easier to maintain. As noted above, abstract classes can have constructors and interfaces cannot, but otherwise are very similar. So when should you use each? When you use interfaces to compose a class, classes functionality is extended by the way 
class instances that it contains. Notation tends to make code easier to reuse and reason out than inheritance from an abstract one. Also, you can use multiple interfaces in a class, but you can only subclass from one abstract class. When designing programs in Kotlin, consider how you can effectively use composition to build up an application from all composable building blocks. Composition often leads to pattern encapsulation, lower coupling, uh, using interface if you have a lot of methods and one or two default implementations, for example, as an aquarium action below. This is an abstract class. Anytime you can't complete a class. For example, going back to the Aquarium Fish class, you can make all Aquarium Fish implement fish action and provide a default implementation for eat while leaving color abstract because there isn't really a default color for fish. Okay. And Okay, so there's a hierarchy of sorts like with interface we define the interface means the structure of the class uh, what functions you can call on it and then we make the abstract class which is an optional thing like we could just simply make an make a concrete class after the interface but if we can make an abstract class uh, like if we need an abstract class, we make an abstract class and the reason why we need it if we have some kind of inheritance going on like Shark and Clicko will be uh, doing it through, you know, uh, um, Aquarium Fish. Now we use interface delegation. Um, I think we'll leave it at today because I have some uh, tasks to attend to. Um, we'll continue this in the next video. And that's it for today.